Okay, I got um, the stuff reasonably cleaned off on the bench. And I got to go over this thing because I have no idea how this thing comes apart. So I've never worked on one of these Toshibas before. This is 1993 model, 26 inch stereo MTS television color. This is the one that has the intermittent uh, on off thing. Like it won't go on unless you drop it on your workbench, then it goes on. So let's see. Uh, here's a like a Phillips head nut driver thing. There's one there. There's one there. It's two. It's got to be another one somewhere. Where's the other one? Or two. Oh, there it is. Look. It's one. Can we see it? Nope. It's down in there. There's one down, down in here. There's a, a screw there. So that's three. Okay, there's the fourth one down in there. Huh, it's hard to see this on this camera. But there's the fourth one down in there. So there's uh, four screws. And there's uh, two screws here. Looks like it holds the input in place. So I'm not sure if they have to get loose or not, but I'll have to try that. And uh, that's it. I already got the schematic. There's the part number, or the model number, CF26C30, 1993. So uh, actually, I take that back. This is April 1994. So uh, maybe that's when this was made. I did look it up. I thought it's the 93 before. On something I looked up, maybe the schematic. Well, this was made in April 1994. Right there. Okay, this is the other thing you need, um, or I need to work on these. And like I said, I'm doing this for entertainment purposes only. I don't want people to start taking their sets apart because it's dangerous. I'm telling you, it's dangerous. And that's because the picture tube inside of here is a near perfect vacuum and if you uh, nick that and that thing wants to uh, implode the glass will be flying all over the place if it implodes and um, what you need is a safety glasses or goggles so I got that because I mean anything could happen so you have to be safe and not sorry Oh yeah, when I when I say I've never done this before, I have worked on televisions that were uh, antique televisions, the tube type, around 1955 era and uh, maybe early 60s era. But um, this is a more modern set, and before they stopped making these picture tube variety sets, I mean this is pretty much how they were making them, you know, with a big big plastic back on. And that protects the CRT or the pitch tube. Obviously, the neck of the pitch tube, tube comes way down here. So, you know, it's it's really highly uh, highly visible. And then the motherboard is small down here, so you have to get the board out of there to work on it. But it's uh, you know you're working underneath the pitch tube here, so you got to be real careful. Or I gotta be real careful. Like I said, for entertainment purposes only, do not try this at home. Okay, I'm turning the set upside down. I'm looking for, for any screws or anything that holds the motherboard in. Really don't see anything. So I'm assuming that the motherboard is just snapped in there. 
and it kind of unsnaps. And uh, looking at the front here, let me put it back down. Yeah, I'm looking at the front where these switches are. And um, I guess this is a separate assembly that attaches to the plastic of the case. That's what I'm assuming. And then there's some kind of plug that comes off this assembly that plugs into the motherboard. At least that's my guess. But I won't know until I take it apart and see what it looks like. I'm just trying to get a general idea of what maybe to expect once I once I take the back off and how to how to take the motherboard out of it. Or if that's what they call it. Call it a motherboard for a computer. So um, I don't know how many boards in there. I was I would assume it's a motherboard with the basic high voltage, the vertical circuits. Uh, maybe tuning and then maybe some daughter boards that plug into it for some of the extra stuff like the like the MTS and you know so I don't know don't know until I take it apart so that's probably it for now talk at you later bye okay what I forgot to say is like my other plan of attack this is just stage one, figuring out how this thing comes apart. The other plan of attack is what I'm going to do once I got it apart. So what I'm going to do is get the motherboard out and you know disconnect it from the, the switches and the CRT. Then once I get it out, I'm going to put the cover back on the set because I don't want uh, the pitch tube to get hit or damaged or anything like that. And that's after I disconnect the, the yoke I'm, I'm assuming that the yoke has a plug that plugs into the, the motherboard. I, I don't feel like taking the yoke off of the neck of the pitcher tube. So uh, my plan is, is that to get, get, the, get the main board out or the motherboard out, take it out, put, the, put this case back on the back of the set so it protects the pitcher tube. Then the next step would be to check all the solder connections that pertain to power and see if I don't have like a cold solder joint. It's possible I have a bad, a bad solder joint because the set started working when I plunked it on the workbench. So I'm going to check that. Then I'm going to replace the power relay. And then also what I'm going to do is check all the capacitors for their location for the vertical section. And there might be like about eight of them there I think when I looked at the schematic. I'm going to see what kind they are and they're, I think they might be the radial kind and I'm going to order those from Mauser or Newark. Get some brand new ones in there. Uh, and that should, I think, correct the vertical linearity problem. There is an adjustment for, I think, vertical height on this set. But first I'm going to replace all the caps because they're, I mean, they're old. They're uh, from uh, 1994. And uh, it had a pretty good linearity problem, you know, where the heads are stretching out. So there's no sense of just trying to fix the power problem on the set. I must just do both. And then once I get the capacitors all replaced on the motherboard, then I'm going to power the set up. And I'm not going to bother powering it now, because I already know it has a problem for one. And for two, I don't feel like charging up the, uh, the anode or the pitcher tube. Then I'll have to discharge it to um, to work on it. I don't want to get zapped with, I think, 40,000 volts that this thing has. So since the pitch tube is all safely discharged, I'm just going to leave it unplugged, not turn it on, and get the parts ordered I need, put it all together, and then turn it on, and then make the vertical height adjustment if I need to. And that's that's the plan. So... I just said all that stuff to just say uh, for your entertainment purposes only. I only I said it because you need a uh, a plan of attack, you know, to figure out what you're going to do on the set. You know, before like just taking it apart and not really having a plan. 
and I think the main part of the plan is if I could get the board out and I'm just assuming that the yoke will disconnect from the motherboard I don't feel like taking the yoke off the neck of the pitch tube but if I could do that then I could get the backpack on the set and that will protect the the pitcher tube so that's that's what I got now folks uh, I'll talk to you later bye